Hi, and welcome to week two of Advent with St. Paul's. Today is Wednesday, December 7th, and this day we are exploring the theme of expecting and continuing through the story from the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, today with the interaction between Mary and the angel Gabriel. The season of Advent reminds us of the peace we have in the humanity of Jesus. God came to us, leaving behind the glory of heaven to be a person like us, feeling pain, joy, loss, and love. Today, we light the candle of peace because in Jesus, heaven came to earth. At every beginning, there is a yearning for the one who is coming. O Emmanuel, prepare us for your coming. We gather together to get ready for what? Only heaven knows. O Emmanuel, prepare us for your coming. We wait for the day when God will create a prevailing peace on the earth and natural born enemies may turn into newborn friends. O Emmanuel, prepare us for your coming. We get ready for God to come close by laying our lives open to Jesus, asking him to sort through all our mixed motives. O Emmanuel, prepare us for your coming. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of these candles, whose flames bring warmth to winter and fill this place with the glow of hope. Amen. This is a reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And Gabriel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by these words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He'll reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. The Gospel of our Lord. This week we meet Mary, a young woman. The New Testament translates this word virgin that has become a pretty important descriptor of Mary over the years of Christian history, but we can also just think about her as a young girl. That's another reasonable reading of the word virgin in the Greek. Mary is a young woman. I like to imagine this scene and to think about how she might have felt. Perhaps she's alone in a room. Perhaps she's outside with other young people doing her tasks and chores of the day. Maybe she's in the kitchen of the house with her mother. Wherever it is that she finds herself this day in her town, Nazareth, an angel of God comes and finds her. This word angel in the Greek means messenger. A messenger named Gabriel, Gabriel, comes to Mary, a young girl from Nazareth, and speaks to her. And she's scared. Now we can understand why, can't we? This story is all about expectation and hope and newness and peace and joy for those of us 2,000 years later. But can you imagine being a young girl and being addressed by a heavenly being, a messenger you don't recognize, someone you don't know, who has come to you, addresses you with your name and tells you something huge, something life altering. This is not what Mary is expecting. 
She is not expecting to become expecting. She is a child, a young woman engaged to a person named Joseph who she doesn't know very well, who doesn't know her very well. Mary is caught in a moment of fear when the unexpected comes to her and invites her into something new. We know that she's scared because Gabriel says, don't be afraid, Mary. The narrator doesn't tell us that Mary trembles or that she is fearful or that she quakes in her boots. The narrator just says that Gabriel says, do not be afraid, Mary. I think that this fear is so relatable. When we're addressed by something that we don't expect, when we're invited into something new, or when someone that we don't know approaches us in an intimate and clear, direct way, it can cause that immediate defensive fear posture. And sometimes that's great. Sometimes that protects us and keeps us safe. And sometimes <laughs> that is just the first thing. When God is involved, when God, the holy thou, is addressing us from outside of ourself, sometimes we feel afraid. But then God assures us that we don't have to be afraid, just as Gabriel assures Mary. Do not be afraid, Mary. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. This week, as we ponder expecting, I want to encourage you to consider a time in your life when you may have felt afraid of something new or afraid of someone new. And think about how God might have been with you in that moment, how God might have been with that person or that experience before they ever came to ask you into a new moment in life. And maybe recognize the courageous hope that we receive from God, that prevailing peace that comes into those new experiences and helps us to take another step forward, assuring us that God is already with us and with them and that God is calling all of us into something new, something we don't expect. Where is God doing that in your life this season? This week, we will end our time together with verse two of Savior of the Nations Come. Not by you.